Fabiola. I was born into a wealthy Roman family. My first marriage to an abusive and unfaithful husband ended in divorce, and the second in widowhood. After my second husband died, I felt guilty about my divorce and decided to do public penance, committing myself to a life of self-denial and good deeds. I built the first Christian public hospital in the West, where I personally tended the sick. During my travels helping the sick, I lived in the hospice of Paula in Bethlehem. Paula was a dear friend of mine. She helped build a monastery and a convent where she was governess. Paula was thought to be the first to call nursing an art. Another woman that both myself and Paula drew inspiration from was Marcella. She taught nursing skills to others while giving spiritual guidance. Marcella also formed a community known as the Brown Dress Society, a, lady, a group of ladies that gave up their beautiful clothes and riches to serve others. I am Florence Nightingale and I was born in May 1820 into a rich British family at the Villa Colomba in Florence, Italy. Inspired by God, I decided to enter into nursing in 1844 despite the disapproval of my family. I laid the foundation of professional nursing by establishing in 1860 a nursing school at St. Thomas Hospital in London, the first nursing school in the world. My work in nursing became noticeable during the Crimean War, where 38 women nurses, trained by myself, volunteered to take care of the wounded soldiers. In that time, I did not recognize that the lack of hygiene was the predominant cause of death, and I believe that death rates were due to poor sanitation, supplies, and overall poor living conditions. This experience influenced my later career when I advocated sanitary living conditions as of great importance. The focus of my numerous writings was on the need for special training for nurses with special importance in sanitation and disease prevention. Hello, my name is Clarissa Harlow Barton, but you can call me Clara. During the American Civil War, I became known as the Angel of the Battlefield. I guess I got this nickname because I risked my life bringing supplies to the soldiers out on the battlefield. Often on the field, I always made sure to care for the sick and wounded. Earlier in my life, I was a teacher and came to find that many of the soldiers I tended to were once my students. I came to call the, the soldiers my boys. I loved to send my boys letters, listen to them, and I would often pray with them. After the war, I organized a campaign to locate missing soldiers. At one point in my life, I visited Europe, where many countries had an established Red Cross organization. Seeing all the good the Red Cross movement had in Europe encouraged me to want to bring it back to America. With the help of the Red Cross officials in Switzerland, I founded the American Red Cross in 1881. The Red Cross is dedicated to disaster preparedness, disaster response, and disaster relief. I retired as president in 1904, and I am proud to say that I left it in capable hands. Hi, my name is Lillian Wald. I was educated at a private boarding school. I had graduated from a two-year nursing program and I was taking classes at the Women's Medical College when I became involved in organizing a class in home nursing for poor immigrants on New York's Lower East Side. I was distressed by conditions there, so I moved to the neighborhood and I volunteered my services as a visiting nurse. With the aid of a couple of wealthy patrons, our operation quickly grew in size, becoming the Henry Street Settlement in New York City. The Henry Street Settlement eventually expanded into the Visiting Nurse Service of New York. I educated the tenement residents about infection control, disease transmission, and personal hygiene. My mission became to put the patient first while emphasizing the value of nursing to communities. Thus, I invented the term public health nursing. This consisted of viewing nursing practice from the patient's point of view. 
also encouraging personal and public responsibility and providing a unifying structure for the delivery of comprehensive, equally available health care. My vision resulted in nursing practice that went beyond simply caring for patients and their families during illness to encompass an agenda of reform in health care, industry, education, recreation, and housing. Hi, I'm Mary Breckenridge. My life has been filled with tragedy and triumph. I was born into privilege in 1881 in Memphis, Tennessee. I was blessed to marry my soulmate, but heartbreakingly I lost him two years later to appendicitis. After his passing, I went to nursing school. I did marry again a few years later and gave birth to my son, Brecky. Not long after, I delivered my daughter, Polly, too early and she passed six hours later. I've been heard saying, the more we seek to hold our children to ourselves, the less they are ours. My life changed forever when I lost my beloved Brecky at four years old to appendicitis. I divorced, restored my maiden name, and I vowed to myself at that time I would never love anyone and would let no one love me. I sought comfort in nursing. I traveled to Europe and discovered nurse midwives, and because there was no training in the US, I was educated in England with the goal of bringing these skills back to the moms and babies of rural America. When I returned, I founded the Kentucky Committee for Mothers and Babies, which later became Frontier Nursing. Finally, in 1939, the Frontier School of Midwifery and Family Nursing was opened to train new nurses here in the U.S. Wow! Those nurses were amazing contributors to public health. What kinds of public health issues do you think we're going to face? I think I'll want my tuition back if they send up us off to war zones like Florence or Clara. <laughs> well, I didn't see a war zone on the schedule, but I think we'll just be focusing on how to promote health and prevent disease in populations using what they teach us in nursing school and public health sciences. That's a huge goal. We're just students, but thankfully, we're super brilliant, <laughs> so we'll be able to learn what we'll need to do out there. Well, Statina sure has her work cut out. And the second in widowhood. After my second husband died, I felt Can guilty. Can you bring it down? She's walking in the trees. I'm sorry. <laughs> my name is Fabiola. I was born in a wealthy Roman family. My first <laughs> Okay, oh, hello, my name is Clarissa Harlow Barton, but you can call me Clara. During the American Civil War... Too high. Oh, okay. I'm bringing supplies to the soldiers out on the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> These were my boys. I love my boys. I was educated at a private school... Uh, boarding... See. <laughs> I went to nursing Giddy school. Up. I did marry Giddy again up. a few years later Giddy and gave birth Giddy to my son, Brecky. <laughs> Floating head. Melody. Tyler. 